Good afternoon, everyone. Um, such a nice group out this afternoon for our uh, December commission meeting. We'd like to welcome you all um, here and also welcome those who are listening uh, through social media and welcome you as, as you are listening to today's meeting as well. Um, we'll begin um, with item number two on the agenda after I since I've called it to order. Um, I'd, I'd like to ask um, Vicki Gaynor, who is now not our acting city manager, but our city manager, to lead us in a word of opening prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand? Please stand. God, we thank you, and we always praise you for just uh, allowing us to be here. Now as we go into this meeting, you told us in your word to always do things decent and in order. And so we're asking God that in this meeting, we always do things that will glorify you, decent and in order to rebuild our city, Father God, to bless the residents of this great city. And we ask that you bless this commission, the work that they do to try to make sure, God, that we have the things that we need. And God, we know that your hand is upon us. So now, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. There are several items I would like to mention in the uh, mayor's report. The city enjoyed a, a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner uh, together, the employees, and um, it was it was truly a, a great day uh, of thanks as we reflected upon this past year and how far we've come. And uh, I certainly enjoyed um, being with with everyone and and having that fellowship. Um, also, uh, December third, we had our uh, tree lighting along with a concert in the park, uh, which WJHG uh, t uh, Television was so kind to bring that uh, here. And uh, Nisa Wilkins uh, was sort of the orchestrator of that event. And it was truly enjoyed by all. And I wanted to uh, thank Catherine Gay and Skinny and Skatinko for all that they did um, to make that event just so wonderful. And I carry forward again and just make a comment about the Christmas parade. It was our fourth annual Christmas parade. It was something that I uh, promised that we would have in Lynn Haven when I was first elected mayor in 2015. And I was so excited that uh, we were able to have that. And it's such a great addition to Florida Avenue. And I think everyone came out and enjoyed it. And again, um, everyone with the city worked so hard to make that such a, a great event. And I think everyone in the city um, is feeling uh, a little more uplifted this holiday season. Last last year was certainly a, a, a difficult time, and, and this year I think we've all uh, sort of joined together and we're starting to feel a little more normalcy. And I was noticing all the Christmas lights uh, as I was driving around last night and just wanted to take you back a year when we decided that we would light up Lynn Haven because we didn't have any street lights and everything was so dark and told everybody, whatever Christmas lights you can find, just put them out on the porch or put them on one little tree. And mine looked so awful, it looked like an airplane flew over and dropped them on my house. But they were out there and, and they were lit up. But um, I, I thought it was uh, really, really great. And one final thing on my report that I would like to remind you of, um, the city of Lynn Haven established very quickly after the uh, storm, uh, the city of Lynn Haven Hurricane Relief Trust Fund to help the residents of our city and hopefully at some point in the future to be able to expand that to the incorporated areas that touch Lynn Haven. And while I would have liked to have seen us have millions of dollars by now, I still haven't ruled that out, but we have about 1,200 applications of people who have uh, been waiting for their applications to be filled. And so as we come on to the end of the year and tax time, if, if you are an individual, a business or a large corporation with millions of dollars, whoever you are, if you would consider um, our uh, 501c3, which was established by Holland and Knight law firm who did $80,000 of pro bono legal work to push that through for us as a city. And I'm so proud as you look at all the different amounts that have been raised across uh, the county since the hurricane, the Lynn Haven Hurricane Relief Fund, we've raised $225,000 and we've given that out to 225 families in $1,000 grants and those grants had no strings attached. They could be used for building materials. They could be used to pay bills. They, at this time of the year, if we get a lot more money in and we're able to get it out, it could even be used to help 
to provide Christmas for their children. So this is about hurricane relief and helping families. So if you're willing to do that, you can do that online um, through the Lynn Haven uh, City website, or you can write a check to the Lynn Haven uh, Hurricane Relief Fund and just bring that to the service department where you pay your water bill and just make sure the envelope is marked Hurricane Relief Fund as well as your check. And there'll be so many people blessed because of your generosity. So I have two proclamations today as part of the mayor's report. And the first one um, is always near and dear to my heart. It's the Wreaths Across America Day. And um, today um, we have, I just missed my, we have Lisa Sheik with us, and I'll call her up in just a moment to accept this proclamation. Um, Linda Vickers is normally our representative from uh, Wreaths Across America. I've enjoyed every year um, going and, and speaking at the cemetery on Saturday at 9 a.m. Um, my father's laid to rest in Mount Hope Cemetery, and he's a veteran. And um, my husband is um, a three-tour combat veteran from the Navy in, uh, from the Vietnam era, and he always goes with me and his group, and, and we enjoy participating. I'll be out of town this Saturday, and Commissioner Russell, who is our mayor pro tem, has graciously agreed to go and speak on my behalf. So I thank you very much for, for doing that. And with that, I'd love to read this proclamation. Whereas members of the Wreaths Across America Bay County are proud to partner with the city of Lynn Haven and Wreaths Across America, a nonprofit organization that recognizes the courage and sacrifice of U.S. veterans by placing wreaths on the graves of the fallen during the holiday season. And whereas on December 14, 2019, Wreaths Across America Bay County and friends will help lay wreaths at Mount Hope Cemetery and the Lynn Haven Community Cemetery. And whereas the wreath laying ceremonies are made possible by the generous commitment of Worcester Wreath Company of Harrington, Maine, which donated tens of thousands of wreaths for the nationwide observance this year. And whereas Wreaths Across America began in 2006 as an offshoot of the Arlington National Cemetery Wreath Project, which started in 1992 with the annual placement of wreaths donated by Worcester Wreath Company. And whereas Wreaths Across America Bay County for the 11th consecutive year is partnering with Wreaths, uh, partnering with wreaths Across America, a nonprofit organization with a mission to remember, honor, and teach about the service and sacrifices of our nation's veterans. And whereas members of the public have sponsored placement of more than 325,000 Worcester Wreath Company wreaths on veterans' graves throughout the U.S. and abroad, now therefore I, Margot Deal Anderson, Mayor of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, do hereby proclaim December 14th, 2019, as Wreaths Across America Day throughout the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, and ask that everyone join me in supporting this worthwhile project in witness whereof I appear unto set my hand and cause the official seal of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida to be affixed this 10th day of December, 2019. This ceremony will be Saturday morning at 9 a.m. beginning at the Mount Hope Cemetery. If you'd like to come and help place those wreaths on the graves of our veterans, it is a wonderful experience. So at this time, I would like to ask Linda Sheik if she would um, come up and let me present this. I have one other proclamation that I want to read today. Um, I don't um, believe that Lieutenant Willoughby is with us today, but um, he, um, this is for him, and I would ask um, any member of the police department, the chief or, or someone can accept this on his behalf. Um, whereas we are here today to express our appreciation to Lieutenant Tom Willoughby and to honor him for his distinguished 43-year career as a sworn police officer at the city of Springfield, the Bay County Sheriff's Office, the State Attorney's Office, and the Lynn Haven Police Department. And whereas Tom began his career with the Springfield Police Department as a police officer and has worked under six police chiefs, three city managers, and five mayors. And whereas when Tom began his career in 2009 with the Lynn Haven, the city had a population of 10,000, which has grown to 21,492 at the time of his retirement in 2019. And whereas Tom has played an important role with the city while advancing through the ranks as a police officer, sergeant, and lieutenant, his assignments during his career include police officer in patrol, investigator in criminal investigations, sergeant in criminal investigations, property room sergeant, and lieutenant in criminal investigations. 
His most recent assignment was the operations commander of the Lynn Haven Police Department. Whereas Tom currently holds a law enforcement certification from the Florida Commission of Law Enforcement, his departmental awards include a 25-year safe driving award, life-saving award, firearms proficiency awards, perfect attendance awards, Elks Lodge Officer of the Year award, as well as multiple letters of commendation from citizens, supervisors, and local law enforcement agencies. And whereas on behalf of the entire city commission, I want to express my sincere appreciation to Tom for his loyalty to the city of Lynn Haven over the past 10 years and wish him much happiness as he begins this exciting new chapter in his life. I was unable to attend uh, Lieutenant Willoughby's uh, party on Saturday as everyone wished him well, but I did present a video um, for him and um, he is extremely special to me because of the support he offered to me during the storm and after the storm, even the day of the storm. And so he is definitely um, no offense to uh, the police chief or anyone, any, uh, anyone else in the blue uniform um, in this room, but Willoughby will forever be my favorite police officer. So um, now, therefore, and I won't tell you why, <laughs> what he said to me, it was, it was a little policey what he said to me. Now, therefore, I'm Margo Anderson, mayor of the city of Lynn Haven, do hereby proclaim Tom's final day of work with the city Tuesday, December 2nd, 2019 as forever Thomas D. Willoughby Day in the city of Lynn Haven, and I urge all citizens and employees to join me in the city commission in congratulating Tom on an outstanding career with the city of Lynn Haven and expressing our sincere appreciation to him for his unwavering dedication and service. We wish him many years of happiness and good health proclaimed on this day, and I will say that I said this in the video, there is a country song by Keith Urban that says, blue is not your color, and I said to him, blue is certainly your color and will always be my favorite color because of you. So this is to Officer Tom Willoughby. And with that, I'll move to the commissioner's reports, which is item number four. And I'll start this um, this week at the opposite end of the table from the last meeting with uh, Commissioner Tinder. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in the last few weeks, it's been a few weeks, I guess, since we were here, um, I've dealt with an, uh, numerous different issues with residents. But the first thing I have to say is a hats off to all those that had anything to do with the Christmas parade. It was amazing. And uh, the the bands just kept on coming. I said, well, that's two, that's three. Anyway, it was extremely impressive. And uh, uh, congratulations to everybody that worked hard on that. That's the first thing. Um, I've been dealing with some code enforcement issues, and I think it was just a cross in communication. Um, also, uh, code enforcement, some FEMA issues as far as trash pickup, but I think we have that figured out. Uh, people who had signed up with FEMA to go on private property. And then code enforcement came back and just kind of crossed paths a little bit. Um, and then of course, dealing with the folks down on Colorado and their road issue and just miscellaneous things like that. But it's been a great year all in all. I can't wait for 2020. Thank you. Commissioner Russell. Thank you, Mayor. Let's see, I gotta get this thing a little closer. <laughs> Um, I too want to thank uh, the staff for the uh, Christmas parade and the Christmas lighting uh, event. Both those went off really, really well, and, and I really enjoyed being part of the parade. So thank you. Um, anybody that is, has not uh, visited the Lynn Haven Animal Shelter, y'all need to consider going by. Uh, Ramon and her staff do an amazing job. Donate anything you can, newspapers, food, whatever you can help. If you can't donate, friend them on Facebook and, and, and share the, the animals. <laughs> You know, these animals need to be adopted. Um, I almost took a cat home the other day. I know my wife would have killed me if I did it. So, um, but I've been working hard trying to get this poor little cat adopted. But um, please try to help, consider helping them if you can. Uh, I've met with several department heads and the city manager over several issues. Um, I'm working on a solution to our backflow prevention and dual check problems that we've got for our irrigation and, and water meters. And uh, I've beat Mr. Kidwell up several times. And last couple of weeks with different questions and answers um, and I'm hoping to present the Commission in January with a possible solution for y'all to consider 
Um, and uh, of course, continually feeling complaints from you know residents and contractors and just trying to solve it. Um, I will tell you that I've uh, happy with the staff, happy with the city manager and happy with the way the city's moving. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Russell. Um, Commissioner Aldridge. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna join the course here and just heap some some praise on our staff. I think the Lynn Haven staff is the best staff in, in all of Bay County um, with any of the municipalities. So I'm I'm thankful to every one of you guys. Y'all put together a great parade. It was a great time and it was a lot of fun. So thank you so much. And I you know, I want the citizens to know that the staff is working very, very hard. They're they're working very hard for you guys. And I and I understand it gets frustrating and I understand that um, you know, many of us are ready to put things behind us, but I would just implore us to, you know, make sure we're looking with compassion and love upon all of our employees and staff here, um, because they are servants of the people and they understand that. But on the flip side, um, you know, the least are the greatest at the end of the day, right? So um, that's how we need to look at that. But I want to thank all of you as well for being involved. The city's moving forward. Um, I've, I've had multiple meetings. We've had um, some, some luncheons and some dinners and um, uh, things are going well. So thank you guys for being here. And that's my, my report. Thank you. Commissioner Perno. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to thank the staff also. I'd like to thank everybody along the back wall. And, and uh, I'd like to thank everybody in the room that cares about the city and all the citizens. And I'd just like to wish everybody a, a, a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year, all of you. And I hope you all find it healthy in your families. And if you can't help someone in need during the holidays, please do so. Um, and uh, I just, just wanted to sincerely wish everybody a, a great holiday season and a Happy New Year. And Keep, keep working hard to, to move the city forward. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, before I call on the uh, city manager report, I just wanted to go back and one thing that I did leave out that I had meant to say is that we as the city of Lynn Haven, I know that I uh, speak for all of you when I say that we uh, certainly are keeping our sister city of Pensacola in our prayers and the Naval Air Station and those uh, tragic events that happened there. So um, let's lift them up in our thoughts and prayers and continue to think of them through this very difficult holiday season. So um, moving to um, item number five is the city manager's report. Ms. Gaynor. Thank you, Mayor. A couple of things are gonna be going on today. So the, f but the first thing, again, thank the employees. They do an awesome job on everything. It's citizens, I'm telling you that we have the best staff that we could ever have right now, and they work really hard for the city of Lynn Haven. Uh, with that said, uh, we started the Department of the Quarter, and, and this month uh, we had two departments that kind of worked together all through the year, and it's hard to separate them. And so we decided to kind of mesh them together because they were together for so long after the storm. So departments of the quarter, this quarter will be facility maintenance and community services. I'm gonna ask all the guys to come forward and uh, be a part of the, and girls, and uh, the head of those departments are Joe Futon and, um, Taylor Holmes. So everyone, all, all of you, please come forward. And while they're coming forward, I'm just going to say a couple of things. These are the folks that are help rebuilding the city. Many of these folks, these got this staff here, they are very committed to doing just that. Um, they spend a lot of hours uh, doing things. Uh, some of them are not even in their job, but they do it anyway. These are the men and women that uh, are part of the animal shelter, uh, facility maintenance. They uh, put on all the youth activities um, and the three buildings right now that we have that are moving along very, very fast. It's because of every single one of these these people here that they are moving along fast. You see on the outside of the garden center how it's looking. I give credit to every single one of them because a lot of times it's not just Joe's guys. It is all of community service. It is other people that join in to help. So I wanted to recognize them. They are also redoing, uh, remodeling the service center. If you've not been inside there, this is the work that they are doing. And I will tell you, this is saving the city hundreds of thousands of dollars. We are just buying the 
material and we have the skill set and we have the people here can work to do the job. We're all do also doing a cleanup fix up at the animal shelter. Again, these are the folks that are there doing it. We had some people to donate us some materials, but these folks here work hard. They don't mind working nights, weekends, because they know the end result is going to be a great result. And so, I again, I want to say thank you to Joe and thank you to Taylor and uh, Yeganya and all the ones that make it happen for the city. So, we hold on one second. I have two um, plaques that I need to present. It's to Community Services, Department of Quarter, presented to Community Services in recognition of the department's outstanding performance, productivity, and dedicated service. And then all of these words are, are heartfelt because we know Community Service does a wonderful job. Taylor, if you'll come accept the plaque on behalf of Community Services. And then Joe's is facilities maintenance, and his says in recognition of this department's outstanding performance, productivity, and dedicated service. Joe, if you will accept this award. And guys, if you will kind of all come in together so we can get one good picture. So some of you may have to come in front. The short people. Boy. Yes. Two rows you're gonna have to make to move in. Go down, Taylor, keep going. Yes. Oh, you think? Thank you. S second thing, we celebrate longevity here at the city of Lynn Haven. Um, before they, they've celebrated it, but I wanted the world to know and I wanted the citizens to know that we value people who stay with us and they retire with us. And so we have two this time that are, have reached the 25 plus mark. Um, they are Reggie Austin and our own fire chief, Chief. John Delange, will will you please come forward, please? Reggie's on. It says, for your 25 years of dedicated service to the city of Lynn Haven, um, we thank you on behalf of the city of Lynn Haven for 25 plus years, and we celebrate it with you, and um, we say thank you. And um, this is something new, again, that we are doing um, because we value our employees. And this is what retention, this is all about retaining great, great employees. So thank you, Commission, for allowing me to do this. And thank you, uh, Chief Delange and Reggie. Mayor, I'm going to forego a 
couple of things um, on the city manager's report, and I'm going to ask that um, Graham needs to come up, and he's going to be the person who will do our department update um, on technology. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity for me to come before you and discuss the state of the technology for the city and where we're at and where we're planning on going in the future. Uh, I'm going to do my best to keep the technical details and some security details to the minimum, but feel free to come to me and we can discuss anything you'd like in uh, greater detail. So as we look forward uh, to make decisions that impact our ability to become a smart city, there are various decisions that uh, need to be made regarding infrastructure and the way in which we're going to plan that. And a lot of these decisions take more forethought uh, and able to, to, to better perform uh, in the future in that regard. So each decision we make, every tax dollar spent needs to be done with in a strategic manner that moves us forward towards the goal that we want to be at in 20 years. The city of Lynnhaven currently has a partnered with WOW for a fiber optic network that connects our, connects our various buildings together. And riding on their self-healing network maximizes the city's resources and uptime. Each of these fiber net, each of these pathways from the fiber network uh, to the internet. Sorry, we have two pathways from the fiber network to the internet for redundancy, and each of these pathways are protected by a firewall that protect that proactively monitors and manages traffic, keeping us safe. Additional firewalls are installed between key departments to add another layer of protection where necessary. Uh, going off of that, one thing that we need to keep in mind for the future is that Microsoft has announced the end of life for Windows 7 machines and devices. And what that means is basically they're going to stop supporting and putting out product updates as well as security updates. So looking at that, we're going to have to go department by department and find where we have these machines already installed and look to see whether or not these current machines can be are capable of being up, upgraded to Windows 10 or whether or not we'll have to replace the machines uh, from where they're at now. Um, going down a list of things, we've got many projects going on currently, and we're trying to go forward with them all. Um, one main thing that we're focusing on is trying to go digital and reduce our paper waste that we have now. Uh, an added benefit to this is we have increased efficiency. We have less time from people traveling between buildings to drop off papers and pick them up, as well as we're creating uh, digital backups that are a lot more secure and in events of natural disasters, we don't lose our uh, files in that regard. Um, since I've been here, we've worked to improve our relations with our citizen, uh, our municipality software vendor. Um, Eunice is who we use, and we've had, we've noticed uh, faster responses, and we actually have close to four or five different projects ongoing at this current moment. Uh, some of those projects going off of uh, trying to get into the digital world include our requisitions and purchase orders are going digital. Currently, that's one of our throttle or bottlenecks in the process right now. It involves a lot of back and forth for people waiting to see where their purchase order is, whether it's been approved, why it hasn't been approved, and people waste a lot of time uh, waiting to find out what's going on there. Whereas with this, we'll be able to log on from a computer anywhere in the city network and get a up-to-date live uh, information on that regard. Another thing going off of that is our work orders are going down the same route to go digital, uh, getting rid of that paper, the need for the drivers to come into the service center and pick up the papers to go out again. All of that just wasted time. So we're giving them, we're looking to install Wi-Fi hotspots in each vehicle. That way they can have their tablets from the vehicle, log into the city network and get their updated information there without never having to leave their current job site that they're on. We're upgrading our check writing system. Currently, uh, it's my understanding that the general ledger is where all of our checks come from. And after that, we have interdepartmental transfers from the actual line or accounts from each department of where the money should be coming from. We're moving away from that so that in each purchase, the money comes directly from the account, which it should, rather than to reduce the overhead of the uh, finance and accounting side of things, keeping track of things, and to give us a better uh, audit record in that regard. Our customer self-service module is one of the main features that we've been working on, and it's very near completion. This will allow citizens to create an account online. They'll be able to log in, 
update their account request services, large degree carrier way, order extra trash cans, as well as pay their uh, water bills online without any fee. We're going away from the $3 fee that we've heard a lot of complaints about. Uh, this is a long process. There's a lot of moving parts involved from the finance side of things to the technology side of things to implementing it on our website and testing it to make sure there's no fail through. Uh, but we're getting very close on that one as well. Uh, utility and bill, bill mail. Our utility right now, the bills are being mailed paperly. We've transferred, moved over from doing that in-house to a third party, but we're also going to be soon to have the ability to email bills and give uh, customers or citizens the option to go paperless if they choose. They can have their utility bills emailed to them, uh, delivered in paper or both. We've Incre or we've added a conference bridge system to the city, so we now have our own conference line. We don't have to depend on other vendors and other uses, or um, and it's more secure. It's included into or forked into our security uh, systems as well, so that's a good thing. Going off of efficiency and some of the workflow improvements that we've made from the day-to-day -day operations, we now have automatic and instantaneous file back for each computer. They sign in, and as the file is created, it's automatically back up and stored in the cloud, and they can be reached and accessed from any other computer in the event that there's an issue with the computer uh, that was not previously implemented. We're in the process of adding a digital time off request system, so no longer will we have paper time off request either. And these update automatically into a calendar for the city manager, so she has one comprehensive place to watch uh, the time off and keep track of that, rather than it being merged with all the other meetings and everything going on. We're looking at a fleet management system to improve our uh, capabilities. And this goes off of what I said about having the wireless, uh, the Wi-Fi hotspots in each vehicle. This is an included feature from the system we're looking at. Uh, it reduces the city liability as well by keeping track of routes and monitoring the individual trucks, um, as well as the drivers, where they go, and the speed of which they're traveling. If there is a complaint, we can look back to see where each driver was at that time and see if we can cross-reference uh, who was the complaint most likely to be about. Um, it also improves response time. There's a numerous features in there that uh, involve, you can input where the next job site's gonna be, and it'll tell you who's the closest person there that can get there quickest. So it has a lot of really cool features that we're trying to get the city in the 21st century in that regard. Uh, looking forward to the future, we're being proactive with our system maintenance and monitoring. Uh, doing this reduces the cost of future upgrades, and in the event that there is a system that fails, we can have uh, updates and notifications prior to this happening, so we can repair it rather than waiting until it's completely dead and we're dead in the water right there. We'll have less downtime in that regard, and it just overall reduces the cost of improving and replacing those systems in the future. Cybersecurity, I don't want to go into too much detail about that because it's a sensitive matter to broadcast to the public, but I can assure you that, as I said before, all of our uh, internet gateways are protected with firewalls, as well as any other uh, additional firewalls are installed onto other systems that require them, such as credit card terminals, phone systems, and so forth. Uh, I can talk to you all in more detail about that privately if, you'd, uh, if, you'd, if it would please you. Um, and then accessibility, the last and final thing that we're working on currently, uh, one of the last and final things we're working on currently, is getting all of our forms online and onto the website, making them fillable forms. We're trying to reduce the wait time when you go into the service center. There's no need for you to have to go in there, get the form, fill it out, wait in line while you're filling it out, and then go back in line and do it again. Whereas this way you could download the form, write it out on the web or from your computer, any other computer, print it out, take it in, and you'll have everything you need to go, drop it off, get it stamped and signed, pay your check and go. In the future, we'd like to maybe see if we can eliminate the need to come into the service center altogether, I'm not trying to out anyone in their job or anything like that, but just to reduce the foot traffic. I know the ladies there would appreciate that because I know at times it can be very overwhelming. Um, so that is generally what we're working on right now. Um, one other thing I should note that as we're making these purchases to replace items damaged or lost by the Hurricane uh, Hurricane Michael or any other future upgrades at this time, we're making every effort that any equipment that is purchased for temporary facilities will be able to transition into the, per the permanent facilities as we're not trying to double purchase anything. Um, and that's pretty much wraps up my report for here, if there's any other questions. Thank you, Graham. Graham, could I, I have a quick question? Where, when you came into the job, um, were any of these projects already underway? 
A lot of them regarding the municipality system were underway, but it seems that they had been dropped or forgotten. I guess, uh, you know, being that there's hurricane seems slightly understandable, but a lot of things had been started and then never finished. So there was a lot of things that we have to basically start from scratch and we're doing over again. Okay. And then that, that leads to my, my next question. In your opinion, what year are we in technology wise around here? Feels a lot like 2006. Oh, okay. you know, about a right. decade behind. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Graham. Thank you. Okay. Mayor, just a few other things. I um, We are finish, finishing up the NRCS project, and that was the cleaning of the ditches and, and um, waterways. And we are now getting those invoices in uh, so that we can pay our contractors and monitoring. And so uh, as of today, we have some um, invoices that need to be paid for NRCS. Uh, we have some some uh, invoices that have to be paid for PPDR, and then we have a few um, uh, invoices from debris removal. And so I just wanted to make the commission aware of that so that I could go on and get all of those invoices. They have been validated by Tetratech, and they also have been validated by us as well. Okay. So just want to let you know that. Last thing, uh, we are pleased that the MLK Festival will be again with us again this year. We invited them back last year, January 20th, and uh, the MLK Festival will be again this year in Sheffield Park, and we're happy to have them. And that date is February, um, excuse me, January 20th. Thank you very much. Um, that will take us to item number six, our city attorney's report. Mayor, I just have one item that okay. is Bell versus the city of Lynn Haven. I previously had corresponded with the commission regarding this matter. Uh, this was a litigation case where uh, the estate of Ms. Bell sued the city in 2013, 2019 council assigned by our insurance carrier filed a motion for summary judgment, which was uh, ultimately successful, uh, concluding the case, at least in circuit court council uh, for the plaintiff, Ms. Bell has offered to forego filing any appeals if the city would waive its right to seek uh, legal fees and cost. In this case, uh, the city's uh, only out-of-pocket cost that I'm aware of is it's deductible and would not get that back anyways. So my recommendation is that we accept this resolution uh, of this matter and we can conclude this case. Is there a motion um, to um, move forward with the attorney's recommendation regarding <clears throat> the Bell versus the city of Lynn Haven case? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion? Any discussion from the public? There appears to be none. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Parnow? Yes. Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so um, the motion would carry and uh, your recommendation would be approved, Mr. Attorney. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. That's all I have. Thank you. We'll move on at this time to our public commentary. This is item number seven. Um, this is a time when any member of the public that is here can address the commission on any topic that you so desire, um, including any item that may come up on tonight's agenda. I do, um, as mayor, as I lead the meeting, I do allow a commentary on each item as we go through. So if you'd like to wait for that particular item and hear the discussion, you may, or you can address it at the beginning. So um, if you would uh, endeavor to keep your comments within the three minute period, we would appreciate that very much. And at this time, I would open um, the floor to public commentary. If you just approach the microphone with any topic that you want to bring to the commission. Thank you. Um. Hi, I'm Shelley Berry, 1721 Illinois Avenue. Two things, I wanted to thank uh, Ben Jenke, Mr. Footon, and his staff person, Stephen. Um, they placed, a, with very much compassion, my son's memorial bench was placed, ordered by Mr. Jenke before the storm. It came in, in uh, I guess, October, late September, and survived the storm, and it was placed in the park in August of this past year. So that's the park he grew up in, and that's where he had all his fun. So I just wanted to thank them for the compassion that was involved in that whole process. Um, secondly, my, I am attached to someone. I, have, I live in a duplex, and 
the lack of work that is being done on their property um, is affecting my property. I sat up late one night recently with a shop vac draining water that was coming onto my new floors. Um, there's a possibility I might have to have my walls removed, the new walls. Um, so I wanted to know what I could do about that. I was told during this process when I inquired before that even when my house was 95% full and I was on the beach, I'm finished, and I was on the beach paying two and a half times my mortgage and rent, the outward appearance at my house looked as though there was nothing being done because of the debris. The inside, it was 95% full, finished. My neighbor, on the other hand, who has had, actually, let me back up. I had to pay $200 to have somebody put tarps on her house that I bought. To, so that the damage to my house would not continue. I had to pay them to go in and seal her floors against mine so that the damage would not continue. I waited 10, almost 11 months to get into my house. I want to know what I can do, who I can speak to, because I was told that I might get cited more rapidly because of the outward appearance of my house at that time, all the debris, and her house would not because you all can't go on her property and actually look in and see the puddles of water. I am not trying to defame anyone. I should have prefaced my comments with that. I just want to know what I can do because I don't want my house to fall apart after chasing contractors and fighting with insurance companies and mortgage companies and subs. Yeah. I just want to know what I can do. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm so sorry that you're going through all of this. I, I would suggest that um, you get with Ms. Gaynor, our city manager, um, in an appointment, and um, she can call in maybe some legal advice about what the city's liability would be and what, what we can do to help you with the situation and go from there. Thank you. Thank you. And we're sorry again for that situation you're going through. Is there anyone else? Sir? I think you are. Yes, my name is Ron Merritt. I live on 414 Colorado Avenue. You were expecting this. Of course. Uh, there was going to be a few more people from Colorado Avenue, but unfortunately, I sent a letter out at your recommendation that we invite the neighbors, but I told them the 12th. Yeah, that was and, logistical and that, issue. that was due to my error. So again, That's okay. as I said to you before. I'll be I'm here honest. Thursday outside just in case they show up and send them <laughs> home for you. And I know being a, a, a county uh, or city commissioner is a thankless job, and we've all been uh, dealing with the storm. So thank you, guys. Now I can whine. <laughs> uh, Colorado Avenue, uh, north of 8th Street, heading up towards the Country Club, has been a strange uh, parcel of land, if you will, over time. And I've talked to Ms. Gaynor about it briefly. And much of what I'm asking for may already be done. Yes. Uh, and I hope it is. I think it is. But over time, that since the storm has literally cleared the view, uh, we can now see things that we never could see before or things we thought. And essentially, uh, there's a couple of things that the group of us have, have talked about. One is, what is the real footprint of Colorado Avenue? Where's the survey? Because the city, if you look at the, the tax record maps and you look at your own individual surveys, which we all, many of us just had done because we had to put fences back, things like that, the street doesn't line up with the footprint of the city property. It seems to keep drifting to the west. Uh, and now we know that there's a lot of construction going on. They're going to put in water lines. Uh, there's some plan, I think, to repave this street, etc. So here's what we would like, and this is probably a dozen of us have already uh, agreed on this. Or actually, one a, a good survey that shows what the city owns, where your property is, uh, and where the easements are. Number one, um, we we kind of like to see a stormwater plan. Uh, there's a, a water retention facility along the street, and I've lived here 17 years. I've never seen any water in it, even after the hurricane. And I think there may have been some modification of the weir or something. But the hydrology isn't working. That street floods. I know there's plans to put in new culverts, but those culverts are going to dump right into Anderson Bayou. Unless there's a retention facility, detention facility, we're going to continue to silt and pollute Anderson Bayou. Uh, I'll start collecting water samples with the RMA. Uh, Julie and I know how to do turbidity samples, things like that. So we're going to monitor that going forward to make sure that we don't do any further damage to that and that whatever is designed for that uh, street meets the criteria and that we all feel good about it. 
the same time, that drainage area needs to be in the survey to make sure we understand what does the city own and what is owned by the other uh, residents on the street. And then the, the construction of the road as it goes forward. Uh, I've heard a variety of different uh, explanations. One is that there's going to put another coat of asphalt or whatever that is on top of it, which will not work. It'll, it'll subside. They originally had put the hot or the cold asphalt right over the dirt road and covered up a manhole cover. And it wasn't until my trailer fell into the dirt through the pavement that they elevated the manhole cover. So there's some water damage issues there. And the stormwater has changed dramatically now that the, go the golf cart shack is gone. So the runoff uh, landscape is quite different. So I don't know if that's been considered in this new plan or not. And then in general, the consideration, the consensus is on Colorado Avenue is it was originally a dead end street. It was a dead end street when I moved there. It was a dead end dirt road. And it's somehow connected to Country Club Drive. The Country Club whole area was built as a gated community, designed, built, and operated that way. There was no connection with Colorado Avenue. It didn't connect, and now it does. But it doesn't connect on city property. It connects to, connects to the trans property, and part of that road goes through my yard that's paved. The city owns a little property. They don't need to go through my yard. They can actually go back on the city property and make that curve, and that needs to be resolved before we start paving. Let's get that sorted out so we're all happy about that. <coughs> No through traffic would be great. We'd love to see the street back to being a dead end, if possible. If it has to go through and connect for whatever reasons, uh, let's look at speed limits, look at, at uh, limiting the types of traffic that goes through there. Many of these things I've already talked to Ms. Gainer about, and many of those things are kind of in the works already. Okay. But anyway, that's all I have. Well, we appreciate you coming, and I know you expressed the, the concerns of many of your neighbors as well. <clears throat> and so I would encourage you to continue that dialogue with Ms. Gainer and the staff. And um, and then if, if you don't feel that it's progressing adequately to come back come back to the commissioner, give, give us a call, Commissioner Mayor or Ms. Gaynor as well. And thank you, sir, for coming out tonight, speaking on behalf of your neighborhood. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. I'm Jeff Yates with Florida Building Code Compliance Authority. I, I, Can you uh, tilt it up just a yes, little bit? There, there you go. Thank you, sir. I'm Jeff Yates with Florida Building Code Compliance Authority. I like to take a minute to address uh, an item on last month's agenda. I think there was a little bit of confusion about uh, private providers. Uh, I think y'all passed an ordinance to reduce fees. Uh, and the way it was seemed to be presented, presented, it was to reduce fees to the private provider. Uh, the fees are actually reduced to the contractors and the fee owners. We don't receive any discount whatsoever, nor any monies from the jurisdiction. Uh, and there were quite a few um, quite a bit of misinformation, absolutely unintentional. That stuff reads, it is impossible to read and understand too often. And, and that's what we're passing out here. We certainly want to address each one of those at this point. But uh, a lot of the questions that were asked last meeting um, are asked and answered. The answers on this are directly from the statute. It's not our words. It's uh, the way the statute reads. Um, but we... As a private provider, we are required to be licensed in the same manner that uh, Lynn Haven's building official is, you know, that works for the city of Lynn Haven or, or their inspectors. We have the same licenses. Uh, the, their requirements are, are no more stringent than the requirements are on us. Uh, and and like, like I say, again, we, we work for the contractor and, and receive no discount. And so we just want to make, make that clear. So. Okay. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Um, David Cooley, 206 Georgia Avenue. Um, I guess I'm, I'm just quite concerned that it's business as usual in Lynn Haven. Over the last year, I don't see anything that's really changed. Um, over the last year, I kept hearing what a great job our previous city manager was doing. I heard that quite a few times in the commission meetings and stuff. <laughs> He's doing a great job. Well, I guess in his pocketbook, he was, okay? But I'm going to ask again, and I know, Margo, you said that there's procedures are perfectly fine. I totally disagree. I I'm not sure what you're referring to, but go ahead, sir. Okay. Last time I said we need new policies and procedures so this does not happen again. Your comment was we don't need to change any procedures. 
I totally disagree with that because we've lost five. Sir, I don't dollars. think that was my comment, but you continue on. That was yeah. not my comment. Oh, okay. I think you paraphrased something there, but go ahead. Well, you thought it was uh, our go present ahead, sir. procedures were okay. Go ahead. Well, obviously not. We've lost five million dollars of our tax money. So something's got to be done or changed with our commissioners, with our procedures, with our policies. If you don't see that, then I think we've got a real problem here. I mean, I think it's still business as usual. If you guys think so, then I think we really have a real problem here. And Sir, that's, that's my opinion. I'd like to point out to you that the mayor is no more powerful in this city than any member of this commission. I, I have one vote. This community voted in 1948 to have a city manager form of government. The city manager manages this city, manages the employees. The mayor does not, sir. Um, I do not have any more power than any member of this commission. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Miller? Okay, next. Leon Miller, 1508 Mississippi Avenue. I noticed in here number 20, 21 and 23 about Kane Griffin Park. Uh, do we have any plans what we want to put that? The reason I'm asking that question, the county commission has just made an announcement that they're going to build a Super Bowl park over there in Callaway. I mean, uh, Southport. Southport. Yes, do we need an extra park to compete with them right at the back door? We need a plan to look at what we're going to do now in the Kane Griffin Park. And for the, it will last us for the next 10 to 15 years. Thank you, Mr. Miller, for that comment. Yes, sir. Mayor, my name's Mike McQuaig. I'm also with Florida Building Code. I was told that I would need to ask, since we're there's three of us here, if I might have a chance to speak also. Absolutely. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, just to elaborate on what Mr. Yates was saying, um, when the when the uh, resolution was presented to the commission, it was presented pretty much as a private provider getting a discount from the city. That is not that is not correct. A fee simple owner, a homeowner. A homeowner is the one that gets the discount. We get no money from the city. We're not asking the money for any city. The code, the code uh, is clear in the intent that um, that legislation wants um, to not for for a for a homeowner to not pay twice, or someone that builds homes to not pay twice, pay a private provider for their services and also pay the jurisdiction. That's what this is about. And when it was presented, uh, your, your resolution was uh, based on one comment or, or, or one paragraph, excuse me, one sentence out of a paragraph that said a local jurisdiction must calculate the cost savings to the local enforcement agency based on a fee owner or contractor hiring a private provider to perform plan reviews and building inspections in lieu of the building official and reduce the permits accordingly. There's another line that goes with that after it. The local jurisdiction may not charge fees for building inspections if the fee owner or contractor hires a private provider. However, the local jurisdiction may charge a reasonable administration fee. So with that said, um, it's asking that you abolish the permit fees, give the credit to the homeowner, and then any private provider that is used and they contract with them, that's, that's how they get paid. They don't want to be paid twice. So we're asking that you revisit this because we just feel the information was not totally provided. We work under DBPR. Uh, there was questions, I, may, I believe, from Mr. Russell about asking who's in charge. Well, Mr. Gordon at this time, he is the authority having jurisdiction. He, he does not do any paperwork except to sign off on a CO at the end. We do, we do all that. There's no liability on the city. We have insurance. And... Um, we're just having a hard time understanding and you're not the only jurisdiction we're trying to work with to get this across 
but it is clear in the statute. We just feel that you did not receive all of the information as to the statute. I appreciate your comments, sir, and <clears throat> perhaps um, the commission can uh, refer to our uh, council and revisit and look and, and uh, try to educate ourselves um, with some of the comments that you've made this evening and take a second look. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you being here. Yes, sir. I'm, excuse me, I'm Al Wilson with uh, Florida Building Code Compliance Authority, also on Beach Plumbing Service Incorporated. Okay. Uh, the, I, I just, not to take any more of your time, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, Thank you, sir. At, on the Facebook uh, recording that I looked from the last meeting, uh, I think you were possibly misinformed. Matter of fact, I know you were misinformed by a member of staff that said that this private provider program was something that just popped up for, after the hurricane and was going away. That's not correct. This statute has been on the books since 2002, and it's only getting stronger. As far as qualification, Mr. Russell, I think you know me. I'm the only master code professional in this area. I have more license and qualifications than anybody in this profession in the panhandle. So we're happy to be here, uh, and we hope and going to work hard that you see us as the asset that we are. And there are other companies are going to be coming. It's, it's something, something new. I know it's forever it's new, and we just want to know that we want to be part of the team. And thank you. Again. Thank you, sir, for being here. And I, I do promise um, on my part I will certainly um, do some work to, to educate myself further on the topic. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Arlene Harrison, 904 Michigan Avenue, and also um, kind of oversee Roberts Hall. And I want to thank the city for the cooperation with the uh, with the Christmas parade and how they you, you worked with me, Commissioner Tender and Vicki Gaynor worked with me uh, so that our events could still proceed. And I truly appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you. And I would like to thank you on behalf of the city and the uh, commission for all the work that you do at Roberts Hall. It's such a central focus of our city, and many people don't know that you do all the work that you do as a volunteer. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak this evening during the public commentary? It appears that there is no one else. So um, we'll move on to our consent agenda. These are items 8 through 13. Item 8 is the minutes from the regular and special meeting. Item 9 is approval of the Safe Route to School application for the Lynn Haven Elementary School sidewalk project. Item number 10 is approval to set a strategic planning workshop for the city's five to seven year plan on January 30th, 2020 at 8.30 a.m. Item number 11 is approval of special auditing RFQ number 19 slash 20 dash one, highest ranked proposer plant in Moran, PLLC in Springfield, Michigan. Item number 12 is approval to terminate the city contract with Greenleaf Lawn Care. Item number 13 is approval to appoint Gary Knuckles to the Planning Commission Board. Is there any item within the consent agenda that anyone within the commission would like to have removed and spoken about as a separate topic, or can we continue with a motion to approve the entire? Ms. Titter? I'd like to discuss number 11. Number 11. Okay. If that's the forensic audit we're referring to. We'll pull number 11 out of to discuss separately um, any other items from the commission at this point then is there a motion to approve the remaining items in the consent agenda or to disapprove to move and your your motion is for approval to, to approve yes the, thank the you consent agenda. is there a second second there's been a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item number 11 and we will continue the discussion of that after the consent agenda um, discussion and vote. Is there any further discussion on the consent agenda items from the board? Any discussion from the public on any one of the items under the consent agenda? You may approach the uh, microphone at this time. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Josh Anderson. I am the owner of Greenleaf Lawn Care. Um, for the past eight months or so, it's been extremely difficult for my family and myself and my company. 
Um, it's hard to not be able to profess your innocence, not able to talk about anything. You're not able to just say anything because, you know, you're in the middle of an investigation. Um, the one thing about this is I am a lifelong resident of Winhaven. Uh, the greatest accomplishment in my career was the winning of this contract. And I have served the city tremendously, gave time and time again, whether it's money or it's time, you know, to better the landscape view of the city, you know. And so there's things about this contract I've tried to talk to you guys several times about, um, but we couldn't, couldn't speak. Um, I can't refuse properties, things that are given to me by a city manager. I try and try to say, no, I'm not doing that. Then I was told that it, it, uh, I'm in fault of the contract or whatever the word is, you know, and that they could terminate my contract. Um, <clears throat> I hope and pray, you know, I've turned everything over, you know, to the Lord with this stuff. And I hope and pray that when it comes out, you know, I don't hold any animosity against anyone. You know, everybody's going to judge. I understand that. Um, but I just wanted to know people to know that, you know, everything that I do is for the city is for the city. And it's because I love the city. Um, last thing I want to touch on is, um, you know, I've not been convicted of anything. So, um, holding payment from me, you know, is, uh, I don't think it's fair. Um, I am owed, you know, a bunch of money and, you know, because I build month behind. So I work all month long, then I build, you know, so it being held from me, you know, and then having to make me get legal representation to get it is not right. Um, I'm walking away from, from this, you know, you guys do what you want as far as terminate my contract or whatever. You know, like I said, I, I've worked very hard for the city. So has my employees, you know, we work tirelessly for, for the city. And I uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the consent agenda items? There appears to be no one else. Um, anyone else on the commission, any of the items? Um, okay. And um, I've, uh, Ms. Commissioner Perno was just pointing out to me that um, Gary Knuckles, um, who has been, um, uh, who has applied to be a member of the Planning Commission Board and is under <clears throat> item number 13 as an approval if he is present. So if you raise your hand, sir, so we can all say thank you to you for your uh, willingness to apply and your willingness to serve. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay, Ms. Gaynor, um, so we've had a motion for approval, a second. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commission yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the consent agenda uh, stands approved. Um, at this time, we will um, look at item number 11, which was requested by Commissioner Tinder to be um, pulled out of the consent agenda. This is the approval of the special auditing RFQ number 19 slash 20 dash one, highest ranked proposer, Plant and Moran P PLLC in Springfield, Michigan. Um, Commissioner Tinder, go ahead. Yes, my first question is what was their bid? Excuse me. What was their bid? Their score. Their score was. Or how much are they going to charge us? Well, that's an RFQ, sir. It means that we sit down with them and we've already put an amount there in terms of what we are going to pay up to that anyway. Okay. But we sit down with them and negotiate a contract. So it's an RFQ it's based off of qualifications. Okay. So we're going to decide. Are we going to the $100,000 that we already voted on? That is the pleasure of the commission. You voted for $100,000, and I can go up to that or I can go half of that. Okay. So you voted for $100,000. Right. That, that is your, that's your amount. They may be able to do that for less. Okay. Less. And it, do, I, do I have a copy of it? Yes, ma'am. Rather than yes, ask you a yes. lot of questions? No, ma'am. You, you do. But you can you can surely ask me. I guess for the sake of the uh, public, I want them to understand what it is we um, we did vote on the amount, and that we are doing samplings. But I also would like to know how the RFQ was worded, and I don't know. 
I think what Commissioner Tinder is asking, if I understand correctly, is that you would like for the public to be aware of what the qualifications listed in the RFQ were. Is, yes, is that something That's we could it. paraphrase or succinctly do quickly? I think I can do that pretty quickly. Um, the, the commission voted to do a sampling for uh, each past city manager, one year out of each past city manager's tenure, uh, up to $100,000. And that may or may not take $100,000, but it's going to be sampling, sampling of cash summaries, POs, um, transactions, any of those things within one year of the past three city managers uh, that have been here. Okay. Will they come here to do that then? Yes, ma'am, they will. And they're coming from Michigan? That We have made that perfectly clear that they will have to come down and spend some time here. I don't know how much time. Again, that is going to be part of the contract that we will sit down with our legal counsel to work out. And if it does not work out for this particular company, then we will go to the next one on the list. Attorney's going to draw up a contract with them before we actually hire them. We have to meet with them. And remember in the RFQ, we did say that there may be some um, suggestions that they have as to how this RFQ, what they should do in this investigation. So we want to hear what suggestions they have as well. Okay. And then we're going to sit down, pull together a contract, and um, you know, we'll, we'll send it back to them. Then the commission will vote on it. So we'll vote on it again. OK, yes, thank you. Are there other questions from the commission on item number 11? Other concerns? Are there any questions from the public on item number 11? There appear to be none. Um, so is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner, Commissioner Tenev? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? No. Commissioner Perno? No. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So. Is that three? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, the motion passes. I apologize. I didn't hear the third one. Um, so um, we will move forward with um, that plan. So moving now on to old business. Um, this will be a, a public hearing. Let me find my clock. The time is 5.07, which will be the beginning of the public hearing. This is the second reading of ordinance number 1081. Um, with an annexation located at 303 34th Street, Annex 19-1, next to the Bay County Sheriff's Department. This is a second reading, and we'll be action, asking for um, action on this item. Um, could we please read ordinance number 1081 at this time? An ordinance annexing into the municipal limits of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, certain contiguous compact unincorporated land located at 303 34th Street East in Bay County, Florida for an approximate 0 0.377 acres of property and is more particularly described herein pursuant to Florida statutes section 171.0044 amending the boundaries of the amending the boundaries of the city to include said land repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith and reciting an effective date. Thank you. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak from the public right now regarding this annexation of the property located at 303 34th Street next to the Bay County Sheriff's Department? There appears to be no one. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion or questions from the commission? There appear to be none. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the motion stands approved, and that public hearing um, ends at 5.08 Central Time. Item number 15 is also a public hearing, which will begin um, at 5.09. Uh, Central Time. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 82, a small scale plan amendment, SSA 90 3. At 303 34th Street East, proposing a change from Bay County Commercial to the City of Haven Commercial. Would you please read that ordinance, Ms. Gaynor? 
an ordinance providing the for the adoption pursuant to chapter 163 Florida statutes of a land use change from Bay County General Commercial to City of Lynn Haven Commercial for an approximate 0 0.377 plus acres of property located at 303 34th Street East in the City of Lynn Haven Bay County Florida repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and providing the effective date. Thank you. This is a public hearing regarding this land use change. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak to this? There appears to be no one. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's been a motion for approval and a second. Any further discussion from the commission? Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yeah. Com yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the motion stands approved. Item number 16 is the second reading of ordinance number 1084, which regulates mobile food truck vendors in the city of Lynn Haven. Um, would, could you please read ordinance number 1084, Ms. Gaynor? Ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida for creating the new chapter entitled Mobile Food Trucks Operating Within the City, providing definitions, regulations for mobile food trucks, requiring mobile food truck vendor permits, establishing regulations and prohi prohibiting, excuse me, prohibitions, providing for enforcement, appeals, and penalties, providing for repealer codification, severability, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Mayor, I'll second it for the uh, purpose of discussion. Okay, so there's been a motion um, and a second. Uh, is there discussion from the commission? Yes, ma'am. Um, my main issue with food trucks, um, I really don't have a problem with food trucks per se but I wanna make sure we're protecting our brick and mortar stores. Um, you know, the, the people that actually have restaurants here that pay taxes. Um, if we allow food trucks in, you know, how does that help, you know, I don't know, the McDonald's down the street, or how does that hurt, you know, Victoria's last bite? I mean, th th these are the people that are here paying property taxes to Lynn Haven, which is where we drive our income. And to allow a food truck come in to compete against them, not produce an income to the city, I have an issue. If we're going to consider this, I think that it needs to be a pretty hefty license fee, um, not fifty dollars or whatever it is. But again, you know, I'm just that's just my opinion. So thank you, ma'am, for letting me speak. Thank you. Since this is the item uh, for the city manager, um, I give her the opportunity to um, refresh memory about um, some of the items about the the licensing, et cetera. So, Mayor, we've had so many requests for food trucks to come in, and one of the things that we like to do is set up a uh, kind of a, a two-step flow uh, where they come in, they um, have to purchase a permit for $100. And then if they are at a, a city event or any event, then there's a $50 fee as well. They can't just come in and set up anywhere. First of all, they have to fill out an application. Um, they first of all have to be permitted for the city of Lynn Haven. Then they have to fill out an application. Then they have to also get the owner of the particular prop particular property to actually be there for that um, time if they don't have all of those things they cannot set up in the city of Lynn Haven okay is there further discussion from the Commission or questions yes, here from me oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Commissioner Aldrich um, yeah you know the, the way I see this as well I don't think it's so much a competition um, in my mind as it is the ball fields or the parks um, where we have like RV setups you know this is just allowing us to move forward with having that um, that ground base for the trucks to move in, but I, I agree. I mean, I don't I don't necessarily want a food truck parking in front of Victoria's last bite and saying, "Hey, I'm here." <laughs> she doesn't either. So, but for our ballparks and stuff, I think it's a great thing and our, our uh, extracurricular activities that we do. So, mm -hmm. Mayor, thank if you. I may. Thank you. I think Commissioner Tender oh, was sorry. next. Yes, <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask, how do we regulate how close they can come to a restaurant? They could go down to Win Dixie Shopping Center and park in front of. Mr. Perno's place out in the parking lot. Uh, I think it has to, I think it should be stipulated that they have to be X amount of feet and a hefty amount from other restaurants. And what happens when we open this up to ballparks? And I, I love food trucks, don't get me wrong, but I think they really need to be regulated. Um, I think they become more and more since the storm and they did it out of necessity 
because it was a, a quick way, quick way to get back into business. But what about at the ballparks, for example? We have concession stands at all of our ballparks. The city is trying to make that money. So we open it up to a variety of food. And before you know it, the city won't be making as much money either selling the things. Not to mention, we have that 10-year contract with Buffalo Rock that we can only sell Pepsi for 10 more years or seven more years or whatever it is. So we have to consider that. If we let food trucks in and they're selling Coke, oh my God, what are we going to do? And I'm being a little bit facetious, but you get the point. Uh, I just think we really need to um, rein in some of the rain in some of it or they're going to be everywhere right. we have food trucks now at the city events at sheffield park and at winter wonderland and things of that nature um and i don't know if you're not getting enough or if you know you think the city needs more at those functions or whatever mm -hmm. but before we vote on this i'd really like to put some distance between that and restaurants and really look at do we want to give up the sales at the you know, baseball fields and football fields and all of that. Right. Yeah. To me, I see that as, as trying to manipulate the market though. I mean, it's a free market, it, you know, that's like saying, well, can we stop Burger King from building cross street from McDonald's because they may take their business? And the answer is no, we can't. It's, it's capitalism. Um, and I, and I think that if the food trucks are getting out there and they're hustling and they're beating out the, the brick and mortar restaurant well the brick and mortar restaurant needs to get outside of the box and figure out how to bring more people in again it's capitalism mm -hmm. um i do it I, every single day people are trying to beat me out of my work so mm -hmm. i go and i and i fight for what what's mine but again when we start trying to say we can pick these people and these people it starts giving me a little bit of heartburn because i'm a big free market guy i think it dictates if no one wants food trucks no one will eat from them and they'll go away if people like mm -hmm. them they'll eat and they'll, there'll be probably more come, but the market will dictate that. So that's just my kind of my stand on it. But I also feel, I, I also feel that when you have businesses that are paying taxes and we are paying uh, enormous amount of taxes, we're paying mortgage payments and electric and, mm -hmm. and running water and all of these things. How can right. we compete against somebody on four wheels who could pull up at 11 o'clock and drive off at two? Well, I think we'd have to put the parameters in place. We'd have to have restrictions. I agree with you. It's not a it's right. not a flawless system we have here, but right. I think that, uh, oh, yeah. that's all I was saying. Yeah. I just think we need to revisit it sure. and and become a little bit more, right. uh, you know, careful to protect our businesses that are here now. Sure. Thank you. Is there any further discussion from the commission regarding um, the food trucks? Um, any discussion from the public? Any opinions? Um, yes, sir, Mr. Miller, you can speak from where you are, sir. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Okay, we had um, a motion um, for discussion, I believe, and a second. Is there um, further discussion or is there another motion or an amendment to a motion? How about that? Yes, I, I would. I would amend the motion. I think who, who, who motion. I think Commissioner Russell made, or did he? I thought I'd, you, I thought you made I'd, the motion. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. Go ahead, Commissioner. Um, yeah, I'll I'll amend the motion. Um, no, no, I changed my mind. I'm going to stick with my original motion for for the time being because th th this is. If I understand this correctly, Ms. Ganger, this is going to come back. If we, if we approve this, it's going to come back and we're going to say, okay, now we've put these, these parameters here. We've put this plan in place. This is how this flow chart's going to work. And then we get the vote on whether or not we're going to allow these trucks to come in. Correct? No. no? That's not no. correct. No. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I'm asking. So what am I, what am I missing here? This yeah. is the vote. Th this is the vote here. Now, okay. if we wanted to go back and repeal and add something to that, that would that would mean that we would have to do another ordinance that would repeal or replace some of the ordinance we already have in place. Well, then how do we add the parameters, I guess, at that point? Once we I'm going to defer to may, our legal. May, may I intervene just for a moment and ask Ms. Gaynor, if, if you don't mind, would you reread the ordinance as it is written for us, and then we'll go from there. Is that okay? Thank you. I'm sorry. Did I throw you off there? An ordinance of
City of Lynn, City Commission of Lynn Haven, Florida, creating a new chapter entitled Mobile food trucks operating within the city, providing definitions, regulations for mobile food trucks, requiring mobile food trucks, vendor permits, establishing regulations and prohibitations, uh, providing for enforcement appeals and penalties, pro providing for repealer, codification and severability, and providing for an effective date. Um, and then at this time, Mr. Albritton, would you make a recommendation to Commissioner Aldridge some possibilities of what he could do as far as amending or retracting or adding to his motion? The proposed ordinance has to either pass as it stands or fail as it stands. We cannot take any modifications because we're in the second reading now. Um, if Commissioner Aldridge does not like the current format of this proposed ordinance, uh, then ultimately the, this would need to fail. And then Commissioner Aldridge and the commission could ask the staff go back and make necessary edits, whatever those may be, and then bring it back before the commission. Okay, well then with my knowledge of that, um, I, I will rescind my motion until we can discuss this further and, and look at some parameters that we may can add in to make us all feel better about the situation. So would you like to make a motion that we um, table this and redirect staff? Yes, ma'am. I'm not trying to put words no, no, in your no, mouth. I, I agree. Let, let's, let's make the motion to, um, to table it then. Um, and I agree. Let's direct the staff to look and see at what parameters maybe other municipalities have put in place um, for food trucks or whatnot. Um, and, you know, we can get with the commission individually. You guys can and see what we're thinking here um, as far as this food truck. And then we can bring it back up at the, at the next commission meeting. Is there a second to Commissioner Aldridge's uh, motion? Second. So there's been a motion and a second that uh, we table this um, food truck um, ordinance 1084 until the next meeting and redirect staff to look at the ordinance as it has been written to see what they could do to modify it and bring back before the commission. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Russell? No. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So we'll be tabling it until the next meeting, which will be in January. Item number 17 is the second reading of ordinance number 1085, amending chapter 54 of the city's code of ordinances, making provisions for disposal shoots at construction sites. Um, it has my name beside it. Um, before I have her, uh, uh, Ms. Gaynor, to reread it, I'll just refresh your memory. Um, I did bring this before the commission um, after um, the condominium where I'm currently living um, people were working on the roof without using these disposal chutes, which are statutorily required. And um, a 10 to 12 piece of pound piece of cast iron fell within three or four feet of where I was walking from eight stories above my head. And um, so that's um, what brought it to my attention. So with the new construction that's going to be taking place in Lynn Haven with buildings that are probably higher than one story, um, I suggest that we um, make our ordinance a little tougher about having these construction disposal chutes so that even a, a full bottle of water tossed from several stores up can really injure someone if, if it's not properly disposed of. So that's what came, that's how it came about. So I would ask at this time for um, uh, Ms. Gaynor to please read the ordinance uh, number 1085 for the second reading for your consideration. An ordinance of the City Commission of Lynn Haven, Florida amending chapter 54 Article 2 of Lynn Haven Code of Ordinances related to building construction wastes, providing for requirements of safety and cleanliness of construction sites, providing severability and an effective date. Thank you. Um, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. So there's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or further questions from the commission? Yes, ma'am, if I may. Yes. Um, while I, I completely understand your reasoning for wanting the shoots and I can get on board with most of it, my concern from reading this um, is there's a differentiation between residential and commercial and setting a height limit of 20 feet. Any house, it's a two story house. Are they going to have to have a construction shoot to replace a roof? You know, I mean, that, that, that could be a, a serious issue down the road. Like my house, I have a two story house. You know, the, the, the eve of my house is at 20 feet. The peak of my house is at probably 30, 35. When I replace the roof, I'm reading this, I'm going to have to have a, a chute to have the shingles taken off my roof. I mean, that, that's a significant expense to the residents of, of, of Lynn Haven if we require that for all residences. Thank you. 
Mayor, if I may. Please go ahead. The, the, the language, let me go back to the page. The language on page two of four, which sets forth um, when a shooter is required, uh, was copied and pasted from OSHA rules and regulations. So, so we've been doing it wrong all this time. Then. I couldn't comment on that, Commissioner, but I can tell you that I literally copied and pasted from OSHA's regulations on page two of four. That's, excuse me, Mayor. I'm, I'm supposed to. I apologize. I'm supposed to ask for permission to speak. So no apology okay. necessary. Okay. Please okay. go ahead. I mean, item I, item line item twelve, and I'm going to read it. You know, for the for the um, situates here to understand. Whenever the building or structure exceeds 20 feet in height, trash and or construction debris chutes shall be required at all times while the construction process is underway. So that means any of y'all have two store houses, you're fixing to have to put construction chutes in next time you have your roof replaced. Um, I, I would love to see that line change to 30 feet or make it commercial instead of residential. You know, I mean, uh, the, the significance of this is, is I mean, severe. I mean, I, I, I completely, um, you know, I hear what I hear what you're saying. Um, I guess what, I, what I'm trying to say, first of all, I don't think we can change what the OSHA requirement says, but I'll defer to the, the attorney on that. But my my concern is whether it's a two story or three story structure, whether it's residential or commercial, um, a, con, a disposal chute means nothing more than an enclosed one enclosed place that the trash comes off the roof and goes into a dumpster instead of someone who's working up on top of the roof just taking a full bottle of water they're not finished with and kind of tossing it over their shoulder and if you're walking down the sidewalk and it hits you in the head um, in my case it was from eight stories above and it was a condominium that's in the Lynn Haven city limits and it was a piece of cast iron it was actually a lightning rod and it buried into the ground in front of me so you were almost without a mayor which I guess could have been good or bad for some people but but um, it it just brought it to my attention. So whatever the pleasure of this commission is, you know, is I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention that that danger does exist. And as we um, embark upon construction, I think we're looking at two and three story buildings. I don't know how many two story homes we have in Lynn Haven. Um, and I know we have probably a good many. Um, and I don't know if there is a provision for making an amendment for a residential structure, but I just wanted to bring it to the attention of the commission if we think it needs more discussion um, or if we don't think it needs more discussion, or if we want to let it die and, and not comply with OSHA. <laughs> this is this commission's priority. I'm going to vote yes if it comes up. I think I just said the wrong thing. But anyway, Mayor, I'm going to be in favor of it. I'll put it that way. I Mayor, apologize for saying how I would vote. I didn't mean to do that. May I speak? Yes. Um, I think for high rises, like the situation that this all began with, absolutely. I see no way around that. Um, and it, we can't go against OSHA, I wouldn't think. I don't know. I'm thinking, of, I, when you just said how many two-story houses, well, the country club's full of them, full of them. I don't know the cost of a shoot. I don't know any of that. Um, so I, I guess I would have to ask if we could also, I hate to say this, table this to the next meeting so that we can investigate. You said your house is possibly 30, 35 feet oh, high. Goodness. So, uh, but I don't want to be hit with something off somebody out there either, um, you know, off a regular house, depending on how close their house is to my house. And there's so many variables to look at. And, and also, if I may add to mm -hmm. you, your discussion, Commissioner Tinder, I, I went to look at what a disposal shoot looks like. And there's one in Panama City coming off the St. Andrews Tower. And it's pretty much, it just looks like almost, uh, it's, it's a disposable looking kind of, almost plastic looking deal that mm -hmm. comes off the it's just a one centralized place that they can deposit things off the roof that mm -hmm. won't be tossed so kind of looks like a plastic line slinky it, it, it doesn't it look like up. an enormous expense but then i don't know that either i haven't researched the expense of it if it's the commission's pleasure i can uh, if this is tabled i can prepare a report and submit it to the commission via email discussing um the ins and outs of this Commissioner Russell, since uh, you've kind of brought up, would you like to make a motion to the attorney about the, what what you would propose, what you would propose that the commission do next regarding this, if anything? Um, well, I think we've got a motion, a second on the floor for the vote. But um, but I mean, ideally for me, you would. Um, I mean, most people don't have three story homes, so if you make it thirty feet, I think you'll you'll preclude most residential homes. I mean, if you don't want to, if you don't want to 
just take residential out altogether, which I would, that's what I would prefer to see is that it's, it only applies to commercial properties. Um, that's what would be my preference. But um, so, not, not. so our uh, city attorney has offered to do some further research and to bring back a, maybe a, re a revision or some possibilities that we could look at. And so I'm not sure who made the original motion, but if you would like to amend or rescind your motion to that. Can I ask one question, of Mayor? Course. I don't know if anyone uh, knows the answer to it, but um, the the shoots that are provided, aren't they provided by the construction companies? I mean, it's not going to fall on the burden of the homeowner, correct? But the, I'm sorry. Well, OSHA, I mean, OSHA, OSHA rules are for the workers. They're not. Right, right, right. So that, right. That I deal with OSHA, yeah, at work all the time. Yes. They make us do crazy stuff. But I, I didn't know with the shoots, like when, when we had our buildings done, at my office and they were doing the roof. I didn't provide a shoot. I mean, the roofing company had a shoot. So I, you know, I don't know that it would be an expense necessarily to anyone in the room, unless you want a construction company or a roofing company, I guess I should say. Um, as, as, a, as a business owner, Mayor, if I may. Of course, go ahead. As a business owner, I, I think you'd be fully aware that business is gonna pass on the cost. Well. They're not gonna absorb the cost. My, yes, that's true. That's very true. Okay, I'll give you that. But, but my point is no one in here is going to have to go buy a chute that's 30 feet high and attach it to their house and say, well, that was, sure was a pain that Lynn Haven made me do this. That's that's my <laughs> point. I know that no, I passed on. nothing's free in life except for your mother's love. But, um, you know, I, I'm just asking a question. I didn't know the answer to it. So I, I'll leave it right there. So there is a motion and a second on the floor at this time. It and I'll leave it at the pleasure of the commission now. Can I speak one more? Yes, go ahead, Commissioner Perna. Can we just make it over three over three floors and up? <laughs> just say third floor. My suggestion for the commission is that they're not satisfied with this proposed ordinance is to reject it. And if you want me to, to bring this back up, I will submit to you a written report of suggestions uh, that you may wish to consider. Um, and there, we can take public commentary at this time. Go ahead, sir. I'm just curious as to where, where you measure the height. Then my house is one story, and my room is 30 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I just wondering where you start with the height. Good question. I hate to see us. I, I'm sorry. Yes, no, speak. go ahead. <laughs> I hate to see us um, uh, move this on to the residents of Lynn Haven. But I certainly, I certainly think it needs to apply to commercial. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bench? OSHA takes care of this, and they require it on any three stories and above commercial buildings because OSHA is not going to come mess with someone's house because it's not a contractor required to build a house. The individual can build his own house, and he runs them all off if he wants to. But if what your problem was, that guy was out of compliance. OSHA should have come and got his ass for that. You know what I'm saying? He was out of compliance there. And that's, that's all it is to it because they're all three stories and above. And, and if it's an individual house, you can do what you want to an individual house. And our, our, thank you. And our, and our Lynn Haven ordinance did not reflect the Florida statute. It was my issue that we needed to put teeth in our Lynn Haven ordinance because we couldn't even do anything when those people were out of compliance. That's the only reason I brought it up. So there I am. I appreciate all input. So there's a motion and a second on the floor. We either rescind the motion or we take a vote. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Yunt. I didn't see your hand. I do apologize. Okay. Brad Yunt, 210 Lakeview Terrace. It's my opinion that unless you're going to be tougher than OSHA, you're just moving your lips. It's not doing anything at all. OSHA regulations are the law of the land, and you should rely on them. Thank you. So there's been a motion and a second, and we have one more. <laughs> okay. We're, we're talking about costs. Wouldn't these things, if they're plastic or metal or whatever, wouldn't they be reusable? So you're not buying something new for every house, are you? So I'm just throwing that out there as a cost issue. Thank you. Is there any other comment? Go ahead. Come on up. Come on up, Mom. <laughs> Full disclosure, this is my mother, Jerry Deal. Go ahead. I just want to say that I think that you ought to just leave the home without the sheet. Thank you. Be commercial. That, that makes good sense to me. Thank you, Mother. And watch out for the condo. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Who I do? Take a vote. Miss Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Yes, yes. 
Whatever. Commissioner Tinder. Oh, are we voting on it like it is? There was a motion and a second. To pass it like it is. Yes. Including everybody. Yes. No. Com Commissioner Aldred. Uh, I'll, I'll no as well on that because I think we should we should look at this. Yes. C Commissioner Perno. No. Commissioner Russell. No, ma'am. Mayor Anderson. I suppose that I will go along with the rest of the commission and say no. Um, I hope that we would look at the ordinance and and make um, you know make sure that our ordinance has the proper teeth that we can make the, the contractors comply because it was an issue. So I'll make some suggestions for the mission. Thank you. And in the words of Tiny Tim, God bless us all. Moving on to the next um, item on the agenda is number 18. And this is new business discussion and possible approval of resolution 2019-12-308 to support the construction of sidewalks in Lynn Haven. Um, and this was placed on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Jenke, our economic development director, did you have any comments you'd like to make? This is just a resubmittal um, of a grant application to DOT for the transportation alternative grant uh, to build some sidewalks here in Lynn Haven. I think I attached a, a map that outlines the proposed sidewalks. Thank you. Um, this is resolution 2019-12-308. Uh, Ms. Gaynor, if you could read the resolution for us, thank you. A resolution of the City of City Commission of City of Lynn Haven, Florida to support construction of sidewalks on 5th Street, Tennessee Avenue, 14th Street, Minnesota Avenue, East Street, 17th Street, and around Sheffield Park with transportation alternative funding and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion from the commission? I have one question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Please um, go ahead. Uh, it says the cost of it is one million, one point six million. Is that? Am I reading the right piece of paper? I have so many here. Yes, that is correct. That's okay. One point six. There are three phases. We're applying right now for phase one and two, and the total for for these two first phases is one point six million. And where, what fund is that money coming from? DOT, 100%. 100%. Well, if it's costing us nothing, I vote yes. <laughs> can't say you, you can't say how you're voting yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I did the same thing. Is there anyone else who would like to ask a question or have a discussion? There appears to be none. Anything from the public? Appears to be none. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Parno? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Absolutely yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Mayor Anderson. Yes, so it stands approved. Sidewalks moving forward. Item number 19, discussion and possible approval of the utility relocate contract for the Jinx Avenue road widening project to the lowest bidder, GAC contractors. And we have a report from utilities director, Mr. Kidwell. Good evening, sir. Good evening. This is for the city's portion of Jinx Avenue. Uh, if anybody's been down Jinx Avenue, they know that Panama City's got theirs nice. It flows well. Uh, this is our side of the street. So. Thank you very much. Any, uh, is there a motion from the commission? So moved. It's been, a move it's been a motion. Second. And a second. Is there any discussion or questions for Mr. Kidwell? Uh, we don't have any choice on this, do we? Well, the no, we really don't. Um, we don't want to put utilities under busy highways. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes fixing them when they're broke a major traffic night and uh, not safe for the workers too. So, Thank uh, you. It's, it's smart business to get them out of the way so we can work on them, add to them uh, as needed. Thank you. Other questions from the commission? There appear to be none. Any questions from the public or concerns? There appear to be none. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Kibble. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Um, yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. That stands approved. Moving to item number 20, discussion and possible award of Kane Griffin electrical lighting contract to the lowest bidder, M. Gay Contractors Incorporated in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, we have a report from city manager. Yes, Mayor. These, these did come before us before a couple of months ago. And the, the commission asked us to go out and bid all of these these projects separately. Um, we did bid those on November 18th. We opened the, this up um, and opened up our bids. Uh, we advertised in three states and several 
uh, uh, newspaper firms in, in those three states. And we came back and uh, we had, um, I, I think there were, in this one, particular one, there were three bidders. And um, this is the lowest bid. Um, I would recommend option four because we can save, some, there are some money savings in that one. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. There's been a motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions or discussion from the board? Yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, you're recommending option number one, is that correct? Four. Option number four. That's, that's like a million. M Gay dirt. Contractors is what we're looking at from Jacksonville, Florida. That's on electrical. Right. May I ask a silly question, kind of? Oh. Isn't this the project that we'd all discussed before at Kane Griffin and the price we said we had a couple hundred thousand to spend and the bid came back at two million? I mean, is that is this the same project we're talking about? We're talking about Ken Griffin Park right. with, with various portions of it um, that have been bid to several different bids. Uh, Mayor, if I may. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner Russell. This, if, if I may expand for a moment, this is the rebuilding of Ken Griffin Park. We put it out for bid, and the bids we were thinking were going to come back around $3 million, and they came back at $5.4 million. Mm -hmm. um, so this commission made the decision to break it into sections and advertise it regionally to try to get a better price. Um, and that's going to be items. Um, yeah, we, we, I'm just saying it's items 2021 20, and 22 and 23. If you add up the, 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 the cumulative cost of all four, though, it comes out 3.1 million, which means we saved $1.3 million by putting this out and breaking it up and put it out regionally over what the original bid was. I mean, it's still a little high, but but I mean, I think originally we were talking three million, if I'm not correct. Yes, sir. Um, so I mean, if, if for my original numbers at three million, we're at three point one, versus the five point four that you know what came back the original bid. So I mean, the way I look at this is we're saving one point what one point three million dollars. And Mayor, I apologize. I do. I actually my um, papers were out of order. This was for the electrical work as you stated so it is five hundred and fifty thousand dollars from engage construction right are there other questions or concerns from the commission regarding this contract are there any concerns or questions from the public there appear to be none is there a motion so moved second been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Ms. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Parna? Yes. Commissioner Tender? No. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So it stands approved. Moving to item number 21. Discussion and possible award of Kane Griffin vertical work to the lowest bidder, Anderson Construction Company of Northwest Florida. And if our city manager has a report, um, as we, um, just for the purpose of um, clarifying to the public, the vertical work. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And I'm going to ask, I think um, our, uh, one of our city engineers here, uh, Chris Forehand, if you'll come, come forward. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is, is one of the second bid packages uh, that we put out, and it's the vertical work, which includes uh, the concession restroom building, uh, the batting cages, uh, the playground, and the large pavilion that was going to cover the, the entire playground. Um, and so based on the prices, uh, we gave you four different options. Uh, the first option there is is the low bid, which included everything. Uh, the second option would be um, uh, to remove the playground equipment, which was $117,000. We uh, I've talked to uh, Ms. Gaynor, and we feel like we can get a playground for, for a lot less than that. So I think we ought to probably remove that part. Uh, option three is um, is to remove uh, the pavilion, which is $134,000. I think you, we can look at some options to put in a, a shade structure, you know, like you've done it some of the, or you're planning on doing it some of the other parts. Uh, and so if, if you do that, if you remove both of those, then you would choose option four, uh, which would be 731630 Thank you very much. Um, are there questions for uh, Mr. Forehand from the commission? 
Chris, um, um, from my numbers, I was just saying that we saved, uh, that we potentially could save 1.4 million. If we go with option four, that's going to pull it down another 250. So that means we're going to be saving somewhere around 1.6 million, Correct. which will take it below the 3 million mark, which was below what we originally had anticipated paying. Correct. Thank you. Yep. Are there other questions for Mr. Forehand from the commission? Yes. It, so if we come down and we save all that money, what are we losing? that was in the original package? The, the playground. The playground? Playground equipment okay. and the large pavilion pole barn type structure that was over the playground. Okay, thank you. What, which, Mayor if I may? Go ahead. Uh, uh, Ms. Dickey, as, as the city manager, uh, Ms. Gaynor, explained to me in a meeting that she thinks that the city can buy the equipment cheaper and install it ourselves. So. It make that makes sense for me. Thank and we you. do have a uh, sunshade that with um, the R yeah RP that just went out there. So that would be in terms of uh, the shade shading over there that would take care of that. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Forehand? And if not, is there a motion? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we accept option four for the uh, vertical work. Second. There's been a motion and a second that the vertical award be awarded to the lowest bidder, Anderson Construction Company of Northwest Florida. Is there any further discussion from the commission? Any discussion from the public? Thank you, Mr. Forehan. Oh. oh, sorry, Mr. Miller, go ahead. Okay, on this uh, equipment, um, it's going to be so great the equipment is down that can't grip and pop the tent, right? Yes, sir, sir. Here, if I may. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner Russell. Um, it's my understanding that uh, Southport Park was already at capacity. We have always been at capacity in Lynn Haven, and, and I feel like Lynn Haven doesn't compete with Bay County. Bay County competes against Lynn Haven. That's not Southport Park. That's the Bay County Park. Yes, ma'am. But they're rebuilding. They're rebuilding it to replace the Southport Park. But, but still, the county is going to have control of it. Yes, sir. They, yes, sir. Mayor, if I may. Thank you. Um, Mr. Miller, I, I think your question is a well asked question. Um, Commissioner Perno has a question he would like to, or a I, concern. I, I like believe to. We're, we're addressing King Griffin now to get ballparks built, and, and we still have the sports complex that we can get uh, built also, Mr. Miller, that will be <laughs> together. The two parks would, would compete with anything that uh, Bay County is going to put up in Southport by the time it's said and done. Once we rebuild a sports complex and possibly make it a hard shell, so it's a shelter also, and we rebuild the fields out there that are going to be regulation to bring in high school high school fields that'll bring in tournaments, um, you know, and and I think uh, I think it really puts a high a high ceiling on what we can do and how we can compete in uh, in in the future out there. So we still and we can still get. Uh, Get that project going and get it done before they get built out there in Southport. Mr. Forham, could you answer that question? Just yes, sir. Sidewalks. Mr. Miller, there, there is a new sidewalk that goes all the way around. They just voted on that. And um, also, if, if I could add, Mr. Miller, um, if, if I could refresh, we went back several months ago when we decided against um, trying to build a, a super sports complex for the, the $6 million price tag that was upon that. We um, compromised and we came back to saying that with all of the new housing and construction in the neighborhood around Kane Griffin, that we would try to make Kane Griffin our premier ballpark. It would be something that would be more in our budget that we could afford here in Lynn Haven. And and with no um, no ill feeling or ill meaning toward the county at all, uh, there's really not a timeline on, on what they're going to be doing in Southport. And we're looking at trying to make uh, baseball and softball feasible again in Lynn Haven for our kids. And uh, Kane Griffin Park is what the commission decided would be the place that we should go at this point for that neighborhood at this time. 
And then I think as we continue to recover from the storm and we continue to see what monies we have available and what we can go forward with, then we can revisit the idea of the sports complex and what that would look like. So I, I think that's, if it, I'm not trying to put words in anybody at the commission's mouth, but I think that's what we decided and came to consensus about um, several months ago and, and moving forward. So, you know, I, I applaud the county for what they're going to do out in Southport, but at the same point, uh, we are the city of Lynn Haven, and we're looking at, you know, trying to take care of our children and our parents and our sports teams at this time in the most feasible and economic way possible. That's, that's just my feeling on it. Of course you can. Go ahead. That, that is that is something that um, we have addressed and will continue to address. And um, if you just look next door at Sheffield Park, we've, we've got some of the premier, we've put a, a swing out there yes, for, for children with wheelchairs and that kind of thing. So we'll, we'll be moving forward. Commissioner Perno, did you want to say something? I'm sorry, go is ahead. Is one of the fields at King Griffin for a Miracle League or that size? It's the T-ball, yeah. It is, okay. Did, did that address your concerns, Mr. Miller? Thank you. Thank you, sir. I know that you're an advocate. Uh, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Arnie, I'll just let you, you can just speak from there. That's fine. Thank you. Um, before the hurricane, both parks were all our Lynn Haven parks and Southport parks were very busy. And um, so I don't see it like a real competition, almost like having you can't really have too many restaurants. Uh, you know, because you go, it's same sort of deal. You go to a restaurant area where there are a bunch of restaurants and you just go to the one that you want to that's available. And I think the, I don't really see it as a competition between the two ball fields. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments from the public before we move forward? Did we have a motion? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on for uh, awarding critical work to the lowest bidder, Anderson Construction Company of Northwest Florida. Any further questions from the board? Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Mayor, uh, Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Um, so it does stand approved. And then we move to item number 22, which is discussion and possible award of Kane Griffin's site work package to the lowest bidder, which is Marshall Brothers. Um, if you would um, just give us a brief description of that site work package. Um, thank you, Mr. Forehand. Yes, ma'am. Um, the site work package includes uh, basically all of the grading, the stormwater pipes, inlets. Uh, there's parking around all the way around the park, uh, concrete work, fence work, dugouts, um, the shade structures, the netting, you know, everything that is not building related. Irrigation. With the exception of the of the dugouts. Thank and, you. Yeah, so Thank that's you. what the site package. Is. Does anyone on the commission have questions for uh, Mr. Forehand regarding the site work um, at the Kane Griffin Splash Pad? Excuse Here. me, not Splash Pad. The, the Kane Griffin um, Park. Thank you, if I may, Mayor. Go ahead. Irrigation sod and all dirt work. Correct. Correct. So so they're going to put the fields in. <laughs> Correct. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions from the commission? Any from the public? Uh, Miss, yes, Miss Arling. So that just so go. That includes um, the, the drainage and the irrigation, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. There has been a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Miss Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So it stands approved. And then moving on to item number 23. This is discussion and possible award of the Kane Griffin splash pad contract to the lowest bidder um, to GAC contractors. Could we give an explanation um, about the splash pad, what we we're talking about, since we know we already have a splash pad there? Uh, please. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. This is a, an expansion of the existing splash pad. It's adding some new features, uh, a slide, and I believe it, it basically doubled the capacity because that was some of the issues that we had with the existing splash pad is it wouldn't accommodate the number of kids that we have there. So we thought it'd be a good idea. The to splash pads have it. been extremely successful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, is there um, a motion or is there discussion from the commission? So moved. Second. It's been a motion and a second that the splash pad contract would go to the lowest 
plus bidder GAC contractors. Is there any discussion from the public? Mayor, if I may. Well, I was asking for the public. Oh, I'm sorry. And there appears to be none. Uh, Commissioner Russell, please go ahead. Um, I, I think a lot of y'all knew know that originally I wasn't um, a, a huge fan of the splash pad going at King Griffin. Um, I thought the city only needed one. Um, but after seeing both of them in operation and seeing that they're at capacity all the time, um, having to turn kids away, I think it's important that we expand the one at King Griffin. There, um, there's a lot of, lot of children there that walk to that park, and, and it, it, I hate to see any kid get turned away. So, Thank, thank you, you, Commissioner man. Russell. I appreciate that comment. Is there anyone else? So there's been a motion and a second. There's no other comment. Ms. Gaynor, if you please call the roll. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. It stands approved. So we'll move to item number 24. The first reading of ordinance number 1086 amending section 6.05-00 transportation access and parking requirements of the city unified land development code and no action will be necessary this evening. Please go ahead and read as I smile. An ordinance of the city of Lynn Haven Florida amending section 6.05.00 of the Lynn Haven Unified Development Unified Land Development Code as it relates to transportation, access, and parking requirements, repealing all ordinances in conflict and providing for an immediately effective date. Thank you. If there are no questions or discussion from the commission, we'll move to the last item. Item number 25, this will be the first reading of ordinance number 1087, a small scale future land use map amendment requesting a land designation change from low to medium density residential. Again, no action will be necessary this evening. An ordinance providing for the adoption pursuant to chapter 163 Florida statutes of a land use change from low density residential to medium density residential for an approximate 5.0 plus acres of property located at 707 17th street east in the city of lynn haven bay county florida repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and providing an effective date thank you so much and with that um, before we adjourn the meeting um, as mayor of the city of lynn haven on behalf of everyone in the city this commission i would like to wish each and every one of you a very merry christmas a very happy new year and we'll look forward to seeing you at the next commission meeting in january god bless everyone meetings adjourned